TV, Advancing Kingdom Lifestyle. My soul magnifies the Lord. My soul magnifies the Lord. Likaya tarabaso koriya magayanda. Ye karabaso koli ra magayan. Tere na 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 magayanda. Leko shekere pe kaya tarana na mayande. This afternoon may you renew our strength. May you renew our strength, O oh God. Likaya tarabaso koli na magayanda. Ye karabaso koli na magayan. Tere na 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 magayanda. We give you glory. We give you praise. Ye kalama sokora magaya, taraba sokoli na magaya na. Ye kalama sokoli na magaya, dali na magaya na. Likaya toraba ga sokori na magaya na. You are the ancient of days. You are the ancient of days. May you reign, O God, reign in this place, O God. Likaya taraba sokori na magaya na. Ye karaba sokori na magaya na. Ye karaba sokole pe kaya tarara na magaya ne. Ye we glorify your name. We lift your name on high, O God. Li kaya talaba sokoli na magaya na. Le koshe kere pe kaya tarara na magaya na. Ye karaba sokore pe kaya tarira magaya na. Ye karaba sokore ya magaya na. Ye karaba se kere re ra magaya tarara na na magaya ne. Li kaya tarara sokori na magaya na. Oh, you are wonderful, God. You are mighty, King of Glory. Ye karaba so kora magaya tarara na 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 na. Ye karaba so kore pe kaya tarara na na magaya ne. Li kaya tora baga so koli na magaya tarara na magaya ne. Li kaya tora baga so koli na magaya ne. Ye karaba kaya tora baga so kora magaya ne. Le karaba so kori ya magaya ne. Ri na 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 magaya ne. Take your place, O God. Take your place. Reko sheke rebe kaya taraba so kori na magaya na. Li kaya taraba so kora magaya ne. Li kaya tora baga so kori na magaya na 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 ne. Le ko she kere pe kaya thara ba so kori na magaya na, li kaya thara ba so kori na magaya ne. We have come to dwell in your presence. We dwelling in your presence, O God. Le ko she kara ba so kori na magaya na, le ko ya thara ba so kori na magaya ne. In your presence we receive our life. In your presence we are strong. In your presence, le ko. She kere pe kaya thala la 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 magaya na le kaya thala ba so kori la magaya na le kaya thala ba so kori la magaya na my soul magnifies the Lord le kaya thala ba so kori la magaya na le ko she kere pe kaya thala magaya ne ri kaya thala ba so kori la magaya na le kaya thala la 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 magaya ne. Shakara magaya, thala magaya na. Ye kalama sokora maya ne. Oshe na la 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 maya ne. Osha ne na la ne. Ye kaya thala masokora maya na. Kara 
Come on, worship him, worship him, worship him. He's worthy. Shandala Somebody worship him, come on, worship him. Shandala Bosala Bala. We worship you, Jesus. Somebody next to you, hold their hands together, begin to pray for that person that God is going to open their spiritual eyes. This is a serious subject. Just pray that God is going to open your spiritual eyes and their ears to hear what God is saying this afternoon. Come, pray for that person right now. Come on, in a few minutes. We worship you, Father God, and give you praise. You are worthy of all the glory. Ancient of days, you are more than enough. Come on, come on. We worship you, Father, King of kings and Lord of lords. Candele Badadoshti, Kende Bradash Tedibidesh Tediba. You are worthy of all the praise, Sandele Mazule Hai, Kalembra Zutele Badashti, Kalabala Sile Alaba Sile Badishalaba, Kandala Bose Braha, Sele Badoshti. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you. We give a praise. Thank you for every individual that God is here, that God will cause our ears to hear what you're saying and our eyes to see what you're saying, oh God. Receive all the praise and all the glory and all the honor. Let this day, oh God, be a day we give you back the glory because, oh God, we deserve. I worship God before you, Father. I praise God before you, Savior, Lord. And every individual praying for one another, oh God, you're going to hear their prayer and answer their prayer. I pray for these, oh God, your sons and daughters. Some they've left work because they've come to worship you. And yet, oh God, nothing good is happening at their workplace, oh Father. But they choose to praise you, Father. I declare, I declare this week of God and decree. And they shall begin to receive, oh God, their promotion. Those who have not been paid, oh God, shall begin to receive their payments and their allowances. In the mighty name of the Lord. Shandali Basti Prahasuki Paliada. Be exalted. Kanda Balusti Prahali Sekete. Oh Shandala Badesti Praha. Thank you, Jesus. We worship the Father that you are faithful. There's no one like you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for today. Be exalted. Be lifted. And be exalted. In Jesus' name. Somebody say Amen and clap your hands a lot of Lord. He's worthy. What a praise. God bless you. God bless you. Come on, give a hand to the worship team. Hallelujah. What a beautiful day the Lord has given to us. Praise the Lord. And we're trying to just do what God is saying us to do and building up on that this morning or this afternoon. We're going to continue with the subject, building according to prophecy. Say building according to prophecy. So we are dealing with how do you handle the prophecy that came in order for it to come to pass. You know, um, I'm joined again by, you know, I've got, like you said, I've got a lot of people in Kenya, friends and sons. So there's a, a Prophet Adam, just lift your hand. That is another son added to me today. The rest you know, Prophet Anne and also uh, Reverend Steve and there's uh, Sister Lucy. Watching She's about to sing a song. I don't know what's up with the technicians there, but maybe tomorrow or another day. And of course, oh, Pastor, uh, sir? No, it's fine. Then we have also uh, Bishop, you know, uh, Cassandra there with a nice shirt today. Thank you, uh, Pastor Gigi, for this welcome this afternoon. Thank you, man of God. You know, I'm seeing every new shirt this side. Every time I see this, got a new shirt. I must discuss before the end of the <laughs> the day. Praise God. Amen. Bring greetings to, to you from uh, our people in South Africa. They're saying we are enjoying the service online. 
please greet them. So we greet you also in that regard. God bless you. Let's take our seats and share the word of God. The Bible says in the book of um, uh, 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 19, we've been building on that one. 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 19. We, and verse 20, we are saying that, that the, the word of God or scripture is the highest level of prophecy. That means every prophetic word I receive, it must be in agreement with the word of God for it to be authenticated as true. Praise God. Other than that, it's not from God. So, we began to discuss this. We said there are 10, 10 points or 10 keys or we must do in order for us to get the prophetic word come to pass. Number one, I'd said we must, you know, uh, record, read, and meditate. Number two, I'd shared we must witness to the word and wage a war in prayer or with the word. And number three, I said we must review the word with your pastor or spiritual covering. And number four, we said we must never do anything that is against what is spoken to you unless the Lord allows you to. And number five, we said. We must confirm the prophetic word with the biblical. Um, uh, is that where we are? No, no, I think. Uh, yeah, number four. Today we're number five. This is, so days five and six today. Okay. As per promise. <laughs> well, I'll do eight and seven. <laughs> so. It's very important. Today we're going to discuss something also that is very important. The first point, uh, we're saying, uh, and we also, we have the prophetic word. The original context here is we have the sure word. The prophetic word which you do well to hear it as a light that shines in a dark place. The Bible says, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God, and the word was God. And that word shined in darkness, and darkness could not comprehend that light. So, whenever there's a word, there's a word light. And that light is not just illumination, it is life. Because the Bible says in John 1, that word was life, and that life became the light of men. So, when you talk about the word of God, scripture, the Bible, it cannot talk about prophecy and not say it's not the Bible. So prophecy must first of all be scriptural. Amen? So the Bible says that light became, that, 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 that life of Jesus became the life of men. And the, the light of men. And it says, and that word became a living being or became flesh and dwelt amongst us. Secondly, we can never prophesy without you know involving or without having the power from jesus jesus is the bible says the source of prophecy if you read uh, uh, the bible in the book of uh, revelation chapter number 19 verse 19 to, verse 9 to 11 revelation 19 just give me that one quickly 19 verse 9 to 11 praise god it talks about a man called john who reviewed who received it. said then the angel said to john write Blessed are those who are called the marriage supper of the Lamb. That marriage supper of the Lamb is worship. And he said, these are the true sayings of God. So in our worshiping God, we are actually in a supper with God, enjoying intimacy with God. Intimacy with God in worship. He said, then he said, we go, go to the next verse, uh, verse, verse 10. And I fell down at the feet of the angel to worship him. And he said to me, see that you do not worship I am your fellow servant and one of your brethren who have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of what? Prophecy. Verse 11. Now I saw heaven open and behold a white horse and he who sat on him was called faithful and true and righteousness and the judges and uh, makes war. So, the, the word of God, Jesus is outrightly the honor of prophecy. Because the Bible says the, the, the testimony of Jesus. Now, when we are prophesying, that's why we cannot say I'm a prophet and yet I don't teach Jesus. I don't teach the word of God. I just come in the, in the church, you stand up, I see this, I see that, I see that. I must 
teach also. It's very important because prophecy must be accompanied with or by the word of God. Because from the word of God now flows the prophetic. The Bible says, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living waters. So whatever I have put on the inside of me, prophecy must be coming out of God's word, which is scripture. So number five, when you receive a prophetic word, you must confirm it with biblical principles and the witness of the spirit. That small s spirit, the real you, the inside of you must witness. So you must confirm the word with biblical principles prophecies should always agree with scripture i just read that earlier must always agree with scripture any part of prophecy that contradicts scripture is not accurate word of god for example you can be praying for um i like to give a practical example you'll be praying for a job or promotion isn't it and then you say lord I'm praying for promotion. May my boss die tomorrow so I can get this position. Isn't it? And you can call that prayer, but it's not prayer. What you're doing is actually, you are actually practicing witchcraft. So that prayer is outside scripture. God cannot listen to it. So sometimes we pray, uh, we, we say things and we make them think, we think it's prayer, it's not prayer. Sometimes we want to give a prophecy of the things that we want to see, and yet it's out of scripture. Somebody is married, you're saying, Lord, kill the husband. I may marry that person. I prophesied, back up. You even sweat for five hours. Nothing happened. You're busy practicing witchcraft. Anything outside God's word, God does not agree. The Bible says God has exalted his word above his name. Why? Because his word documents who God is. His word is a manual book. When you buy a fridge or a stove, you always get the manual book to read how does it operate. How does God operate? It's found in the scriptures. Hello? So saying I'm a Christian and I don't have a word, I'm, I'm going to be a powerless Christian. I need to know what my instruments are. So, when a prophecy is given, it must be in agreement with scripture. Because we have to get now reference from the word of God and begin to compare. Reference and begin to compare. Reference and begin to compare. Compare your prophecy according to God's word and other prophecies you have received for agreement. Because then you agree with the word of God. The word of God says, yes. The word of God says, I shall live and not die. When you became a Christian, maybe you did some things like me, when you just got born again, and you wake up in the night, you have the hardcover Bible, and you say to the Lord, Lord, wherever I open, that's my Bible study for today. Did you do that before? Pastor Gigi, this is my section. I told you, this is my section. That's yours, Pastor Gigi. They can agree with me. You know, so one day, I, I opened the Bible. I said to myself, I, I went physically counting the pages of my Bible because I wanted to see what is at the center of the Bible I was using. So I counted page 1 to 1520, including the index and concordance at the back. And no King James. And then I divided by two to get the center of the Bible. And I found the scripture that is actually interesting. I found a scripture that says, you know, uh, it's, it's Psalm 117. It is 118 verse 17. It says to me, he said, I shall, I shall live and not die to declare the works of God. He said, oh, this is the word of life. I don't know about your Bible, but just try to count that and find what is in the center of your Bible. For me, it gave that scripture. I shall live and not die to declare the works of God. So sometimes you could be looking for prophecy and that it's right in the Bible. Because we have been confused by looking for someone to always tell you. Now, somebody already told you about the prophecy. You need to bring back the prophecy and compare. What Pastor Gigi said, I shall live and not die. Get scripture. Now things are easy. You can Google you give the scripture, oh wow. Then you are able to pray, Father, thank you. It shall come to pass. 
even if I'm feeling sick, because the man of God who never knew I'm sick declared, I shall receive healing now. You get my point? Because otherwise you say, no, but, but how can he say that when I'm sick? Does he, I'm sick, how can he say I shall live long and not die when I think I'm dying? Because prophecy comes to actually activate your faith. So when a word is given to you, and you get to the Bible, you begin to compare notes. The word spoken and what the Bible says. Because what was spoken to you is simply a rhema word that God used. Somebody will speak to you. But there is a logos of the word of God. The written word of God that confirms with the rhema. The rhema is to do with what is called the kairos time of God. Hello. It's spoken now. It's fresh. <laughs> it comes. But the logos is what is authentically documented. To agree with the rhema. So when you hear the, them say, that says a lot. And some prophecies don't even say that says a lot. They just says, you know, uh, when you woke up tomorrow, when you wake up tomorrow, you know, go to the market, there's someone who's going to meet you there. And they'll give you money. They haven't said the Lord has shared, but God has spoken. Hello? But most people who don't hear God are the ones like saying, I heard the Lord say. Mostly. Because they want to make you feel God is speaking. And they make, you know, all the things... You know, last time I was here, I told you the difference between the prophetic and the pathetic. <laughs> the prophetic is you say, the Lord is saying, or you say, that is the Lord. But the pathetic is, mm, mm, mm. like something is smelling, you know, pathetic. Mm, mm, mm. But you know what? Because that's what Christians want. They like, they like drama. They like drama. I mean, the moment uh, Apostle Juma and Pastor Gigi will begin to give a holy coffee in this church, it will be packed here. He said, this holy coffee is from Israel. When you drink, you, ha you are going to find a man in four days. There will be women everywhere. They are seated even down here. True or false? But if I say, put yourself in accordance to what the Bible says, pray, Look smart, bath, tweeze, a man will come. Because men are moved by what they see. Of course they pray. They're looking for a woman who is an intercessor. But the one woman also who knows who she is. She can twist nicely when she's walking. She knows who she is. Again, that's free consultancy. You won't pay for that. Just take it. <laughs> see, when you pray, you sweat, isn't it? So when you pray, you sweat, go and bath and come to church nicely. So, scripture has been given as our yardstick. It is a standard of every prophetic word. It's our standard. We cannot grow our churches on prophecy alone. We can't grow our churches on deliverance alone. Now you've got people who, are said, people who say they are called into deliverance ministry. And they've got a big ministry. And you find churches like this have got, like that have got no members. They've got visitors every Sunday. Because the deliverance ministry. But Jesus is, was clear in the book of Mark chapter 16. From 15 going down. It says, those who believe in my name. Isn't it? And he said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. The gospel. The gospel. Gospel. G-O-S-P-E. God's only son provides eternal life. That's gospel for me. To every creature. Look at the next verse. And he said to them, that He who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. Look at the next verse. And these signs will follow those who believe in. Uh, these signs shall follow those who believe. Who believe. Then in my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with tongues. They will do, uh, they, they'll, 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 they'll take up serpents. It will not uh, uh, harm them. They will drink anything that is deadly or poisonous. It will, not, uh, it will not hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and the sick shall recover. Now, that means deliverance, which is the casting out of demons, which is the most emphasized deliverance. Because the greatest deliverance a Christian need is here. The mind. 
We must teach you more than we should be doing actions or these gymnastics in the church. And the gymnastics in the church that are happening must not be uh, uh, orchestrated by man. When God is manifesting, we see God is manifesting. Hello? This sign. So, you casting out of demons is not a ministry for pastors or prophets or teachers or it is a ministry for every believer. He says he knows who believe. Hello? Casting out demons is not, it's not even supposed to be for all these pastors here. No, it's supposed to be for everyone else. Now you are watching a prophet on TV casting out one demon the whole day. And they ask a demon, what's your name? Who sent you? It's the devil, of course. Where did you come from? Hell, of course. And the pastor said, oh, I'll show you this thing. He's going to go. Oh, when you, are said, when you are staying all those hours on one demon, then we question what you understand about deliverance. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, the greatest deliverance you need is your mindset. The church will only grow when we understand the prophecy. The most misunderstood subject now is prophet. Prophecy. That's why sometimes it's difficult. You know, when you're going to, part time I was invited to go to parliament. I've been there three times now. The first time I was invited to go to parliament, I told them, remove prophet on my profile. <laughs> because they, 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 they always misunderstand you. I rather the prophetic manifest when I'm talking that announce I'm a prophet. Yeah? So the second time they called me, they said, no, the professor, the prophet has come. I said, okay. How did they see? Because the first time I went, the prophetic manifested. But also because you don't want people to, 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 to be scared because of the first prophet job done so many things at the moment. Look at 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4 verse 1 to 4. The Bible says, 1 John chapter 4 verse 1 to 4. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test every the spirits whether they are of God, because many prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. Every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is already in the world. It's already there. You are of godly children and have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than the one that is in the world. Prophecy is always spoken. Like I'm saying, every day you hear prophecy. Every day you can prophesy even yourself. But the word of God must be the you know, regulator, the prophetic word. The word of God, balance must be the word of God. The word of God is the only accurate prophecy that we have. Praise God. So confirm with biblical principles. Confirm with what the word of God says regarding the prophecy and begin to run the prophetic word. And God will, will bless you. Number six. Remember, prophecies are always conditional. When we hear a personal prophecy, you must know. Number six, remember, personal prophecies are always conditional. Always. Every prophecy that you receive has got a condition. Even God always said, if you do this, I'll do this. In other words, said, in other words God says, I will dash if you will dash. God said, if you are willing and obedient, Isaiah 1, verse 18 and 19. Isaiah 1, verse 18 and 19. says, come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red as crimson, they shall be as, as wool. Look at 19. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. So, look at verse 20, which we, which we don't read actually. He said, but if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured by the sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. So, it's an if there. 
In other words, when somebody gives you a prophecy, my sister, I see you going to America, isn't it? Or going to uh, UK. You will not go to UK without getting a ticket and a visa. The prophecy is true about going. But God will make it smooth for your ticket and your visa. Maybe somebody is going to pay for your ticket to actually, to actually confirm this is God who spoke. You won't, you won't go through all the wrong procedures. But you won't say, because the word is spoken, I'll, I'll sleep and find myself in UK. That's what we do to God, actually. That's exactly what we do when we're praying to God. We say it sometimes, um, it's like you, are, you, you, you get hot water, and you get, you know, maize meal, and you switch on the stove, and you put, you know, the water at the side. We didn't put on the plate of the stove. Or you just put the water on the stove and it's boiling and you close your eyes and say, Lord, as I open my eyes, oh God, it will be done. Believe you me, no matter how long you close your eyes when you wake up, the water will be boiling and the mess will be on the side. You've got to do it. Praise God. God, God has got a few, a, a minimum percentage for your personal prophecy to come to pass more than you do it's entirely up to you a prophet has spoken to you the lord says you shall be a minister in the government in the coming years and that pastor speaks or prophet speaks he speaks and he goes away he is just a messenger but sure there you are that man who spoke i'll see if he's a man of god i'll be waiting waiting for what a prophetic word will have no effect on you without reciprocating to it. Amen? The word of God, the prophetic word only works regarding your response, negative or positive. You know what? You can even refuse the word. I don't want to be a minister. I refuse in Jesus' name. God would pick somebody else. A man called Hezekiah in the book of uh, 2 Kings chapter 20 verse 1 to 6 2 Kings 20 and in those days Hezekiah was sick and near death and Isaiah the authentic prophet authentic prophet came went to him and said to him thus says the Lord set your house in order for you shall die and not live. Look at that. Verse 2. Then he turned his face towards what? The wall. This one. What does it mean? It means two things. This is prophetic worship. It also means telling God what you have done. Because you always write what you have done. This man being a commander in the army. and the police, He wrote whatever he did. Lord, on that day... I helped an orphanage. Lord, on that day, I opened a clinic. Lord, on that day, I did ABCD. So he had lined everything there. He turned his face against the wall and prayed to the Lord, saying, Look at that. Remember, Lord God, how I pray, how I have walked before you in truth and with a loyal heart. And I've done what is good in your sight. And Ezekiah cried bitterly you know you know that cry <laughs> and it happened before isaiah had gone out into the middle court because their homes were made in three parts like a tabernacle this is your house this is your first yard and this is the second yard so when he came from his house before he could get out of the final court. The Bible says in the middle court that the word of the Lord came to him saying, look at that. The Lord said to him, return and tell Hezekiah, the leader of my people. Thus says the Lord again, the Lord of your father David, I have heard your prayer and I have seen your tears. Surely I will heal you. On the third day you shall go up the house of the Lord. Wow. Look at this. And I will add to your days 15 
years. So God is, to, is going to restore his years and add 15 more years. And I will deliver you and this city from the hands of the king of Syria. And I will defend this city for my own sake and for the sake of my servant David. And then he asked, okay, he asked verse 8. Verse 8. And Ezekiah said to Isaiah, what is a sign? <laughs> what is a sign that the Lord will heal me? And that I should, I should go up to the house of the Lord the third day. Look at the answer. And Isaiah said, this is a sign to you from the Lord. That the Lord will do a thing which has been spoken. Shall your shadow go forward 10 degrees and go backwards 10 degrees? There's nothing wrong to ask for a sign when a prophecy is given to you. So this man has been given a word, you will die. He says to God, his response, touched God. He didn't say, you prophet, you are a liar, I will beat you, you are an idiot. How can you tell me I'm dying? He heard the word and he knew this is an authentic prophet of God. When he heard, he went to God who sent him. That's what I call the prophetic triangle. God is there, there is a prophet, there is a receiver. So when God speaks the prophet, he sent the pro to, to, to receiver. That says the Lord. This man went back to God. He said, I know he's your prophet. I'm coming back. And God came back. Go back and tell him again. God says, I'm changing my mind. Simple that. I'm changing my mind because of your attitude towards this prayer. You shall not die. Imagine, Pastor Adam, Pastor Adam said, ah, God has spoken. Tell my neighbors to come and take all these things. But he said, I know, Lord, you have spoken, but I'm not ready. Because when a word is given to you, remember I said on the first day, you must personalize the word. It is yours. It's not the prophet's word. What you do with it matters. He said, no, no, no. <laughs> if, he, if Ezekiel was from Nigeria, he said, Lord, I refuse to die. Oh, I will not die today in the name of Jesus. And God saw his heart because I have heard. Now, here's my point as I'm closing. Is there not any good thing you've done for the Lord? This is what Ezekiel said to God. Why must I die now? The people who are not as faithful as me, they are still alive. Why must I die when I still have got things to do? Why must I die when I'm still, I'm, still, I'm still feeling I've got a project coming up to support your work, Lord? Look, I have been faithful to you, Father. See, God is your Father. Talk. God is not a policeman. He's your Father. Because people think God is a policeman just waiting to arrest you at the, at the traffic robot, so, you know, at the roadblock. <laughs> I got you because you don't have a license or insurance. No. That's what they do. God is saying, my son, come. Jesus said, come unto me with that uh, heavy burden and I will give you rest. So when he went to God, honestly, Father, I know the prophet has come. And he cried in worship. Not just crying and complaining, but he cried in worship. God said, I have teen, seen your tears. Tell your neighbor, it matters who you cry to. But I've gone to the prophet and beat him up. You, you think I can die? That's why also, look at the life of a prophet. A prophet must be full of love. Imagine if Hezekiah had an issue with Hezekiah. And the Lord said, go and tell him he's dying. That's the best prophecy you could give to him. The Lord says, you are dying. I told you this character you have. And then God says, go back and tell him he's not dying. How do you come back? Ah, uh, you know, I don't know, God was joking. Because sometimes in the prophetic, many times, I know people, most of you, as long as you're a Christian, and the pastor especially, you have had people who hurt you. Isn't it? I've had people who have hurt me. And sometimes God said to you, pray for that person. They're like, but God, is this a person I should work, work 2 a.m. for? You could have asked me to pray in the afternoon, I'm already awake. God said, kneel down and pray for this person. And when you pray for that person, Lord, I pray, long life, long life. And you hear the next day, his wife is saying, my wife, my husband almost died in an accident, but God saved him. And you're like, no, no, prayed. I don't even know. You feel like saying, hey, I'm the one who prayed here. 
So he must have, must have loved. Look at Jeremiah. Jeremiah given a word by the Lord in Jeremiah 20. Go and read it in your own time. Jeremiah 20 verse 1 to 9. Back to 12. He prophesied in the church, man of God. He preached in the church against the sin of the king and his household. The Bible says after Jeremiah preached, he's, yeah, Peshua. And now Peshua, the son of Ima, the priest, who was the chief, he was actually an elder in the church. Heard Jeremiah prophesying things. What did he do? He beat him up. The pastor's son. <laughs> beat the prophet. <laughs> then Peshua struck Jeremiah the prophet and put him in the stocks, in the sitting board. That way in the house, in the high gate of Benjamin. Which was, and Jeremiah, look at Jeremiah. Jeremiah in verse, 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 verse 7. Okay, look at Jeremiah in verse 2 when he was upset. Verse 3. Jeremiah was upset in verse 3. Verse 3. And it came on that next day that Peshua brought Jeremiah out of the stock where he had locked him. 24 hours in the ceiling board, the prophet, or prophesying against the pastor and his children. Then Jeremiah said to him, The Lord has called you, has not called you Peshua, but Magobisabab. He began to curse. There's four. For thus the Lord, that says the Lord, behold, I will make you a terror <laughs> to yourself and to your friends, and they shall fall by the sweat of their enemies. And you, your and your eyes shall see it. I will give all Judah into the hand of the king of Babylon, and he shall carry them captive to Babylon. And th look at verse seven. Jeremiah now is saying to God, "O oh Lord, you deceived me." And I was persuaded you are stronger than I, and I have pe and, and, and you have prevailed. I am in derision daily. Everybody is mocking me. I'm a prophet. I prophesy they beat me up. Lord, you deceive me. Look at verse 9. Okay. Then I said, verse Jeremiah said, then I said, I will not preach again in your name, nor speak anymore in your name, God. But this word was in my heart like a fire. The moment is making a, a confession. Lord, you have deceived me. I won't even preach again about your life. I won't talk about you anymore. How can I be beaten? The Bible says, as he was saying those, the word that he heard from God, that's why the word is important. He said, the word that I've heard from God before came back to me in my heart like a bird. He's speaking in the flesh. I'm upset with you, God. But the word came in my heart like a fire shot in my bone. I was worried. I could not hold it back. And I could not speak. He said in verse 12. And I began to praise God again. I was saying, Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Not the evil. The righteous are afflicted. But the Lord shall deliver them from them all. So the word will come to you. But you see when the word comes to you. You must do something about it. Because you are the one that is going to activate and actualize what is spoken. It's like a word is given to you. Boom. Words are like bullets. It comes, it targets. What is your reaction? You can either die or not. People are sure that they die or not. Praise God. He said, it will never tend to me void, but it shall accomplish. That accomplishment of the word needs someone to respond to it for it to come to pass as it flows on you you respond and the word begins to do things for you praise god that's what god said lift your hand and i've got one minute say father god in the name of jesus help me to get into the word and begin to do the things that you have decided for me to do i refuse to walk in the flesh Help me, Father, to confirm every word with scripture. Make me a lover of your word. Give me a passion to study the word that I may know the power of God. Father, help me to know that she will not do anything to me without me agreeing. So, for Father, every prophetic word that has come in my life today or before, that was from you. I agree with it, O oh Father. I thank you for the fruits that shall be coming with it. In the name of Jesus, I honor you, Lord, because you are faithful. Be 
lifted, be glorified, be magnified, be exalted. Come on, pray. Katabra doste ke palagiada. Sentembra diste ke palagadoste ke. Zekrada jaki paligados tembraya. Zekabasto breke sute bakitayadaba. In the name of Jesus, these are your people, Father. Let the word begin to grow. Let the word begin to grow. Let the word begin to grow in their hearts, of Father. And whatever discouragement comes, of Father, they shall overcome. They shall overcome. They shall overcome. They shall overcome. In the mighty name of the Lord, we cancel every power of the word of the enemy that came to them, of God. We cancel every evil word spoken over them. We nullify every curse, every enchantment, every spell, every necromancer demonic forces that were spoken over their families of God. We declare the word of God shall begin to grow and mature, begin to grow and make them be able to get to the place you have ordained them to be, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we thank you, Father. In that atmosphere, prepare your offering right now and give to God. The number is going to be put there quickly, quickly because of time. Let God, uh, give, let God bless you this week. God bless this week. Find something to give right now because every time you're in the house of God, give to God. Don't get, get, don't get tired. The same way you're not tired to eat every day, don't get tired to sow every day. The number is there. Give to God and the Lord shall bless you. Kalabasu Tebrahaya. Thank you, Jesus. Bless you, Father, for your goodness. We pray for the giving of your people, Father God, as a give. On behalf of Pastor Gigi and Apostle Juma and the rest of the team, Father, I pray that place, oh God, a blessing over your people as they give in the apostolic house today. Let, oh God, their finances or oh, take a new turn as they give, Father. Let the grace of God multiply in their house, in their homes, in Jesus' mighty name, that none of them shall lack any good thing. Receive all the glory, receive all the praise, receive all the honor in the name of of Jesus Christ. Pastor Gigi can give us a benediction as we go this afternoon. Praise the Lord. Wonderful. Praise the Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you so much. Uh, I believe you're blessed. Amen. Yeah, you're free. You can stand up and let's um, see you tomorrow. God bless you. God bless you so much. Give your offering the cash. Our bags are out here. May the Lord bless you. We'll see you uh, tomorrow for the lunch or service. Thank you so much, God's servant, for that wonderful ministry. Those who are online, uh, please, before you sign off, uh, please give, give your offerings. And may the Lord bless you.